All right, let's go. Three, two, one. Welcome, welcome back. This is the uh, Light Forge Arena tier list card preview valuation stream where we give you all the numbers that our algorithm has spit out for the Ashes of Outland cards. And then we explain to you why that is so and how you should use these cards and what impact on the meta these cards have. I'm odd with them. This is Murps. We are like five hours in. We're 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 on our third class. We're we're doing this. <laughs> Hunter time. <laughs> this is your favorite. This is your time to shine. This is my time to shine. Let's talk about Hunter, the value car generation oriented class that I know and love. <laughs> um, and that's Hunter. All right, let's through go through the cars, and then I'll talk about okay. the value oriented playstyle. Okay. Before you talk about the Hunter value oriented playstyle, or even a card. I want to point out that there are more than 12 Hunter cards in this meta that are rated above the highest Ashes of Outlands card for Hunter. More than 12. Yeah. So, so I just wanted to set the stage of the Ashes of Outland treatment of Hunter. And, and I'm going to bring back something from the first, uh, the first segment of, uh, of this card review when we talked about the meta overall which is that the meta is going to be a lot slower. There are a ton of taunts starting at three mana, and like a lot of the good taunts also heal. Okay, go Murps. What's the best Hunter oh. card in Ashes of Outlands? God, this is so sad. All right, the, the best card is, uh, comes in at 144. So good, but if you're comparing to a lot of other classes, very tame. Very, very tame. Just for comparison, uh, the two classes we've done before were Demon Hunter, where Koyafang Warlord was 171, and uh, Marsh Hydra and Druid, which was a 176. This is a 144. Yeah. It's a 144. Uh, it's a 4-mana 5-2 Beast with Rush already pretty decent, right? Already pretty good. Battlecry, choose a friendly minion, gain a copy of its <laughs> Death Rattle. Mm. So... If you are able to gain a death rattle that is even somewhat significant, this is a, 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 a stupidly insane broken card, right? Four mana for five damage already is really, really good. Part of the problem is like there's not that many death rattles, and yeah. there's not that many amazing death rattles. So that's really the problem with it. It's not even a problem. Like most of the time, you're going to use it, you won't have a death rattle. And you're still quite happy with it because four mana for a five damage rush minion um, is nice. It's even a beast, so it has some synergies with stuff. Um, if we were in a different meta and hunters had a lot more death rattles, this could climb much higher, like much, much higher. Um, but that's right the problem with it. And um, this, is, this is not a joke. This is just a fact. Of the neutral cards that are rated above a 100, Half of the death rattles heal your face. <laughs> really? I did not know there, that. There's That's not, there's not a lot fact. of death rattles. <laughs> really? Oh, wow. Yep, in this meta. Oh, wow. It's, it's, okay. it's just because there's two. Uh, oh, sorry. Oh, uh, sorry. Uh, there's, uh, there's one. There's one, oh, and there's a total gosh. of two death rattles. Oh, there's so many no, death, yeah. uh, death rattles. That are like Jeez. attached to good cards, I mean. My god. Okay. Um oh no no sorry, Loot Hoarder exists. Sorry, sorry, we're a one third. Oh, we're okay. a one third. Uh, that's loot a good, Hoarder that's barely a good was above a one hundred though. If I just yeah, changed yeah. Okay. like my, my cutoff point, I could have gotten the numbers I wanted. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Um And those are for what? Like small cards or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are not for those are for things that could be on the board by the time you are like by the time, by you the actually time you're playing this. Them. Not yeah. like yeah, like uh the, I'm not counting like uh the scribe, for example. So you Great. could you could get I mean, more powerful so stuff there, in a later game. Yeah, I, I, you could be like, oh, but if you have Scrapyard Colossus, no, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. We're we're talking about like stuff that you will passively just have on the board if you're using this on turn four. Okay. Uh, next one is the most interesting card coming in for Hunter. It is the Nagran Slam, ten mana Hunter card. Summon four, three, five cleft hoofs that attack random enemies. So that is just like imagine. Four, three, fives popping on the board and hitting whatever, like, on your opponent's side, including possibly their face. Um, 12 damage for 10 mana uh, onto your opponent's face if they have an empty board. 
uh, which for hunters would be the ideal use, but you know, your opponents probably have stuff and not all of these are going to go face. Um, still very good. 141 is your like really high uh, for a 10 mana card exactly. that you can't really control. And, and in hunter, right? Like, yeah. Uh, it also means like for hunter, all 10 mana cards means you don't get to deal two damage to your opponent's face with your hero power. So that's all built in. It's, it's kind of an insane card. Uh, but it's, uh, you know, it has some question marks to it because of all the randomness. Um, yeah. 141. It's an epic card. You won't see it a lot. Like, don't be, like, playing around the Grand Slam. You kind of can't. <laughs> Which is part of why it's good. Anyways. Next card is Augmented Porcupine. It's a 3-mana 2-4 beast. Death Rattle, deal this minion's attack damage, randomly split among all enemies. It can go hit minions, it can hit face. It's just pretty decent. So you're giving up one stat, right? You're giving up uh, most likely one attack uh, in order for this to deal, at minimum, two damage to all enemies. It can go face, uh, it can hit minions. It's good. Like, it's just good. Uh, you're getting a look like more than you should uh, for its cost. If you could control it, that would be awesome, but you can't. It's at 131. It is also a beast, and you're going to see that beast synergies are, are making a comeback here. So, oh, huge. Yeah, that's going to be nice yeah. for this one, especially something that synergizes with being buffed. A lot of beast buffs are coming. Um, but keep in mind, this is an epic. You're not going to see it a lot, just like uh, the Net Grand Slam is an epic. So, so far... The lion at a rare was the only good card that we covered. All right. Now, I bring this up because the next card drops all the way down to a 120, which is like the average card in your deck. And once I describe the card to you, you'll be like, what? How is this the average card in your deck? Your deck is ridiculous now. Welcome to the Year of the Dragon standard set. Scrapshot yeah. is four mana, deal three damage, give a random beast in your hand, plus three, plus three. There are a lot of beasts in this meta, especially for Hunter. You will almost always have a beast in your hand just by like drafting normally. So you're dealing three damage, which is two mana, and then for another two mana, you're bu buffing a beast in your hand by plus three, plus three. Like it's just a, it's a very flexible, easily used card, um, and it's basically the average card around your deck. It's about the same as a, a troll bat rider, which also deals three damage, but that's a random three damage and that actually puts a three three minion on the board. Yeah, so you get it immediately, um, but that can't go face. This can go face. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes you just want to consolidate instead of having a 3-3 three, three minion. So it's, like, pretty comparable, actually. Yep. It's, like, pretty comparable. Yep. Um, each has its own, like, uh, you know, pros and cons to it. Yep. Uh, but that's the synergy card uh, for beasts, right? And it's rare. Now, going on, 115. 115 for Hunter is around where, like, a Firehawk is. So, like, all these cards that were, like, premium premium before, like, a very short while ago, are now in this standard meta with all the Year of the Dragon cards finally in. They're, they're, they're pushed down because uh, we center everything on the average card uh, in your deck. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's Hellbor, 1 mana, 2, 1. Death Rattle, give a random beast in your hand, plus 1, plus 1. As you can see... Like, 115 is pretty damn good. This is Firehawk level. We rate a 1 mana 2 1, even in Hunter. What's a 1 mana 2 1? Um, well, what's, what's the Murloc 1 mana 2 1? Like, what's it called? Huh? Oh, uh, Tide Caller? Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. Well, oh, no, not, not Tide Caller. Raider. Raider. Uh, the Murloc Raider is a 72. So it's not like one drops are just rated super highly for Hunter. But Hellbore manages to be a 115, partly because it is a beast. And at one mana, the fact that you are a beast and can trigger some of these beast synergies, is, it, it means a lot. And yeah. on top of that, it itself provides a beast synergy. So it, it kind of like, you know, it, it synergizes with the rest of what you're doing. Like, that's a lot of points. That's like 40 freaking points for the beast tag, plus this like plus one, plus one into your hand, which I think people normally don't think of as a huge deal. But it just synergizes yeah. so well with what the hunter needs to do in this meta. Yeah. Um, so if you guys remember how high like Fairy Dragon was when we had all of those sick dragon synergies, mm -hmm. and Fairy Dragon didn't provide anything, right? It just provided the body itself. It was an additional dragon for you to proc stuff off of. Hellbore is double-sided. 
it is a beast for you guys to, you know, like proc stuff out of, uh, and it gives other beasts. So it's double-sided, it's small. It's just really good for, for hunters. Like when you combine all of these small effects, um, that's how you get to 115. That's why it is so freaking good. It's a, a very non-sexy card that just ends up being um, really, really good and definitely what you want in hunters, especially for the mana cost. Mm -hmm. And remember, one health stuff in hunters matters way less than in other classes because most other classes have to take face damage to remove it besides mage. And yeah. as a hunter, you want to be dealing damage to their face. So if a demon hunter spends one mana to remove your one mana card that also provides a little extra afterwards and takes two face damage, well, you've just gotten a one mana cheaper hero power. That, yep. like, sorry, a two mana cheaper hero power. Like a free hero power because your opponent had to spend a mana. Uh, like, that, that, that's good. Um, yeah, if a Demon Hunter your powers this down, you essentially had a card that was zero mana, two damage to the face, give your beast in your hand plus one plus one. Yeah. That's actually a really good That's card. really good for Hunter. That's actually an insanely good card. Because yeah. for Hunter, getting two extra damage to the face reads, win the game a turn earlier. Yeah. Um, okay. Next, at 113, so basically same area, uh, is Pack Tactics. This is around where Bloodfriend Raptor is, but Bloodfriend Raptor is high in Hunter because of the beast synergy. Uh, Pack Tactics is a secret. Whenever a friendly minion is attacked, summon a 3-3 copy. Okay. Yeah, like, fine. You know, you get a 3-3 for fine. two mana. You, the, the other card, the Venom Strike one, that's better. Um, I don't think it's in this meta, uh, but uh, that gave you a... a, a the cobra which is better than a 3-3 of whatever it happens to be attacked yeah. um moving on uh, we have 104 this one's going to be interesting uh imprisoned felmaw two mana five four demon that is dormant for two turns when this awakens attack a random enemy so it does not have rush it attacks a random thing on the board which can include your opponent's face Yeah, but if you remember, this is higher than uh, Imprisoned Vile Fiend. Yes, because yeah. it's a 5-4 and not a 3-5. Which, as we talked about, is really important. Mm. So you don't get to control it, but the fact that it is a 5-4 instead of a 3-5 really matters. Mm. <laughs> it really, really matters. And also um, the fact that, like, uh, the other thing just literally can never go face, whereas this yeah. thing sometimes go face matters as well. So yes, this ends up being still not a good card, but is it better than the Vile Fiend? Way better. Yes. Uh, in Prison Vile Fiend and Hunter is only a 92. Like it's yeah. even lower than in other classes because you're on a two turn delay where it does nothing and then it still can't do anything because it can only rush a mini. Um, okay, what else oh, is up? We did skip a card. Oh, did we skip a card? Uh, Sorry. Yeah, oh, thank you to the okay. guy for pointing it out. Uh, we have Scavenger's Ingenuity. This is a common spell. Two mana, draw a beast, give it plus three, plus three. It's a 113. It's okay. Yeah. Decent. Raptor level, Dark Iron Dwarf level. Yeah. Um, so this is one of those, like, whatever you spend you get it back it's just a little bit slow that's it mm -hmm. it's just a little bit slow but it's it's good it's, it's definitely pickable um and there are some beasts like augmented porcupine that get more than just a plus three plus three mm -hmm. like you're, you're getting a lot more than just plus three plus three so it's uh pretty nice like this is how you want to draw cards right like normally you, yeah. you have things that's like basically like one mana draw a card uh well for an extra mana you get plus three plus three you'll take that Mm -hmm. um okay well uh, what else are we through with all the hunter cards do hunters have like a couple terrible cards that we haven't gotten to or are we done i think we may be done are we, are we done? missing anything? Wow, i think we're hunters... done with hunters okay so they don't have like tippy top end cards but like these are all fine yeah these are all like quite decent cards yeah wow. but like we said right like you don't People want have... you don't want decent cards in this meta yeah like, decent they cards aren't like, going to get it done. 
yeah, these are all decent like stuff. And, and yes, we understand, guys. We'll, we'll go through legendaries, but we just want to make sure we didn't miss any of the other, um, yep, the other cards. So yeah, cool. The hunters don't have total trash being added; they get a little consistency. But um, yeah, they're... so like they got these cute beast synergies. They got like nice minions on mm. curve, nice draws that provide a small bit of bonus. No one gives a shit about that. It's the, <laughs> it's the era of Marsh Hiders <laughs> pounding your minions and getting extra value, okay? Uh, no one cares about that. <laughs> like, none of this stuff feels like it belongs to this set. It felt like something that, like, they should have done, like, two years ago when this stuff would have been impactful. Now it's kind of yeah. like, eh, okay. All right. Um, going to the legendaries. The first legendary is Beastmaster Lorax. It's an 8-mana 5-5. Five, five. Battle cry, summon three beasts from your hand. This one's an 86. It's not good. You have to have three beasts from your hand. And then, again, whenever you summon stuff from your hand, you're basically just gaining mana. Yeah. And um, you have to get first gain, like, four more mana back to really get your value. And then you get other mana if you have beasts. And you can't play this You card will until summon eight. something, though. Yeah, oh yeah, like, you'll have a beast in your hand yeah. at least. You'll have a beast. You might even have two. Maybe. Maybe. Mm -hmm. They're not going to be that huge. So on average, you're summoning like one thing. Um, but that's what's preventing it from, from being absolute trash. Mm -hmm. But it's just, it just ends up being bad. All right. Should we talk about the real good one? The real good one. Three mana, two, four. Zixer, Apex Predator. It is a three mana, two, four beast with rush. Which is pretty good. And then it has Death Rattle. Shuffle, Zixor Prime into your deck. Murps, what is Zixor Prime? All right. Zixor Prime is an 8 mana 4-4 four, four rush. Battle cry, summon three copies of this minion. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, that's good. All right, these Prime cards are pretty freaking good. Like, why don't... All right, look. Why don't these have charge to, in some capacity? Huh? Why? What's up with that, man? What's so, going on with that? Normally, shuffle stuff in deck is not worth a lot, but these prime cards are so good that they're all worth quite a significant amount of value, actually. And you combine it with this meta, in which everything's slower, and you end up drawing a few more cards than you normally would. Makes a difference. Anyway, 177. That puts it um, not as good as a Varanus, definitely not as good as a Zephyrs. Uh, we have a little below an Octasari, and um, well, I mean, like a lot of a lot below an Octasari, and a lot above a Colossus or a Siamut. Uh It's good. It's I don't good. know what else to say about it. You guys are gonna see with these like prime cards, they're all stupidly good. <laughs> they're all so stupidly good. Anyways, all right, um, that's it for Hunter. I don't know. Yeah. We already kind of summarized how Hunter works in this meta, which is to say it doesn't. Um, it's it's going to try to do things that you don't care about and that is not suitable for the meta. Um, it's not going to be... Like, it's going to be a bottom tier class, almost certainly. Uh, yeah, I mean, a lot of the good stuff is coming back, right? You do have, like, your Desert Spears coming back. Your Primordial Explorers aren't going anywhere. Um, but... This new set with all of its offering bonus is not, it's not only not like adding good value cards, it's also not synergizing with the other stuff. Because the other stuff that are good are all dragon stuff. And they're not beasts. And they're definitely not beasts in your hand. So you kind of have this weird divisive thing going on where you're going to get a lot of beast synergy cards, but your good cards are all going to be dragon synergy or like, you know, random removals. Yep. All right. That's Hunter. Okay. Um, I want to give a shout out to our technical director at the LifeForge podcast. Uh, he's the one that's been inputting most of, of uh, the elements here. Me and Murps input some of the uh, other elements. And uh, it's really like at this point, the algorithm runs a lot of the stuff with stuff that we've already done. Um, and really, it took like so many years of, of all working together to, to get to this point. So I want to give a shout out. Um, and uh and also to everyone watching this on youtube um i am starting a pressure campaign i'm gonna bury this here so it doesn't get out of hand but i'm starting an internal pressure campaign to get merps to do bg coops which we are not officially doing despite the fact that on sundays merps nope. have cooped with me for bgs for six straight weekends 
Um, nope, it's not happening. So it is not happening officially. But if we get and enough pressure, the, it the may happen in the future. All right. Uh, that's it for this. This is uh, Hunter. We are going to do Mage next. See you guys. See you guys.